tonight it is faith and prayer the connection understanding the connection between faith and prayer that is our objective tonight mark chapter 11 verse 24 24 it said therefore i say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and ye shall have them what things soever ye desire when you pray believe pray believe that is prayer and faith james chapter 1 verse 5 and 6 if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of god that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed but let him ask in faith i want to say by way of introduction that we serve a prayer answering god prayer answering god you are worthy of praise you deserve my praise you are worthy of praise you deserve my praise prayer answering god you are worthy of praise oh lord you deserve my praise is a prayer answering God. Psalm 65, verse 2. He said, O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. O thou that hearest prayer. He does not only hear prayers, he answers prayers. According to Jeremiah chapter 33 and in verse 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knewest not. Call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great things, mighty things, which you didn't know before. Psalm 18 and in verse 3. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord reigneth. Blessed be the rock, let the rock of my salvation be exalted. The Lord reigneth. Blessed be the rock, and let the rock of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised so he will hear me and save me from my enemy so we serve a prayer answering god john chapter 16 and in verse 24 john 16 he said he that you have asked nothing in my name ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Ask 
and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Matthew chapter 7 and in verse 7. He said, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. The Lord bless his word in the name of Jesus. And then Hebrews chapter 4 and in verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Every scripture here shows that God is a prayer answering God. But there is a second issue. As eager as God is to hear and answer prayers, not many people see answer to their prayers. God is eager to hear and God is eager to answer prayers. But not many people see answer to their prayers. Not many see the answer to their prayers. Why? Among other things, there is the challenge of faith. The faith component of prayer. What has faith got to do with prayer? That's where the message is tonight. What has faith got to do with prayer? Number one, faith involves the knowledge and understanding of the reality and reliability of God. It involves the knowledge and the understanding of the reality and reliability of God. That God is real and God is reliable Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 But without faith It is impossible to please God For he that cometh to him must believe That he is And he is a rewarder Of them that diligently seek him So at the place of prayer While you pray It must be clear that God is real at the place of prayer, it must be clear that God is reliable. That God is real. And that God is reliable. Number two. Faith involves the revelation of the word of God. That is, understanding God's dealings and operations in, in Bible days. Again, faith involves the revelation of the word of God. And that is, understanding God's dealings and operations in Bible days. You are aware of what God has done before. In Romans chapter 10, verse 8, it says, The word, but what said it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth 
and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach verse 17 so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God Hebrews chapter 11 verse 32 all the way to verse 34 he said Hebrews chapter 11 verse 32 to verse 34 Hebrews 11 he said time will fail me through faith time will fail me Hebrews 11 32 to 34 It says, time will fail to tell of Gideon of Barak, Samson of Jephthi of David also, and Samuel and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They stopped the mouth of lion. They quenched the violence of the fire. They escaped the edge of the sword through faith. So at the place of prayer, when you pray in faith, you are aware. That you are not dealing with a God who has not done it before. A. A. Allen said, We know what God can do because we know what He did. If we are aware of what God did before, we can be convinced of what He will do now. So, faith involves an understanding of the reality and the reliability. Of the Almighty God is real God is reliable faith involves the revelation of the Word of God his dealings and operations in Bible days somebody say aloud amen so you come praying yesterday I saw a young man who was brought into the service maybe the ICT will have the clip of that young man Mother and father, or a man and his mother, held him while he could barely walk. They held him to come. When, in the course of a healing service yesterday, the power of God touched him, and they didn't need to hold him anymore. He could walk out by himself like this. That was the testimony he came out to testify about. But my heart flamed and I laid hands on him and violently he stood up and ran up this altar and ran everywhere. I told somebody who was so shocked about that miracle. I said that was A.A. Allen operation. If you ever watched or you ever got to know about the healing revival. So, faith happens when you know what God has done before. In Bible days in history. And you pray from the point of view that God has done this and that before. And he will do it again. That was how that young man came. Whole body vibrating. Spastic paralysis. And then, before now, you went too fast. And then, he came out after prayers and was able to walk by himself without support anymore. That was the healing he came to testify about. But faith said that was not enough. Faith said he needed to be complete. And then the prayer was prayed for him. He was on the floor. Power rushed through his legs. When he jacked up, moved him. That's right. That was faith at work. Fire.
mother is on the floor. It's on his way to the altar. Do you remember how he came at all? Are you just sitting and looking like that? God is giving somebody a turnaround miracle tonight. He's giving you a change of story tonight. Every paralysis, that's right, that's right. Everything paralyzed or crippled in your life, tonight that paralytic condition is over. Business paralysis, marital paralysis, financial paralysis, destiny paralysis, career paralysis is over tonight. Shout the loudest, amen. Give the Lord a big clap of hand and tell somebody by yourself, tell them something is moving in your life tonight. Something that was not moving shall move tonight. Something that was not moving shall move tonight. Give the Lord a praise as you take your seat. Hallelujah. It involves understanding what God did before so we can know what he will do. Now, number three, faith involves the knowledge and understanding of the will of God regarding particular situations. It involves the knowledge and the understanding of the will of God regarding particular situations. That is, you are praying, you are not guessing. You know God wants you healed. You know it's the will of God to be delivered. In 1 John chapter 5 verse 14, it says that the knowledge of the will of God brings confidence. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And we know, and if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. We have the petitions that we desired of him. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Even as thy soul prospered, third John verse 2. So you are locating scriptures that show you what God wants for you. And so your prayer is based not just on what you need, but what God wills for your life. It's not just that you need it. It is that you know that God wills it for your life. God wants you to be well. God wants you to be free. God wants you to be established. God wants you to have supplies. God wants you to be married. God wants you to have children. He said be fruitful and multiply. So the deeper the knowledge of God's will you have, the stronger the realm of faith you operate. The deeper the knowledge of the will of God you have, the stronger the dimension of faith you will operate in. And the stronger will be the force of your prayer. The deeper your knowledge of God's will, the stronger the dimension of faith you operate in, and the stronger the force of your prayer. You know, prayer has different levels of force. Hallelujah. There are times even God will reveal his will to you in the revelation of the night. Like this sight. God showed it in the, dream, in the vision of the night, revelation of the night. And I sent the young man to go to the airport road on so and so side and look for the land for the church. So when the will of God is known, prayer ceases to be a struggle. When the will of God is known, faith is no longer an issue. So it's very, very important. So what does it mean to pray in faith? It means you are praying with the understanding that God is real. You are praying with an understanding of what God has done before and you are praying with an understanding of the will of God. Number four, faith involves praying with conviction and 
confidence. That your requests shall be answered. It is praying with conviction and confidence that your requests shall be answered. Say it in another way. It is praying from a victory point of view. A victory point of view. A victory point of view. You are not praying from a defeat point of view. You are praying from a victory point of view. Mark chapter 11 verse 24. He said, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. So, believe. There is no need to pray if you don't believe. Don't pray about anything if you don't believe it will be answered. Because it won't be answered. <laughs> you know, there are so many people, for them, prayer is more like guesswork. It's more like, let me try. Maybe God will answer. No. When you pray, believe. When you pray, if you don't believe, no need to pray. So it is praying from a victory vantage point. Praying fully well that your heavenly father knows your need and is willing to meet them. Join Matthew chapter 6 verse 6 to 8 to Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. But thou when thou prayest enter into thy closet and when thou hast shut thy door pray to thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the hidden do. For they think that they shall be heard. For they are much speaking. These ones are just loquacious and talkative. But be not therefore like them. And this is the key. For your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. That is, God is aware of what you came to ask. Then why do we need to ask if we already knew what we needed? One, to confirm our dependence. Two, to confirm our helplessness without him. Three, to give him the pleasure of being requested from. Daddy, give me this, makes fathers happy. Hello. I'm sorry I rushed too fast there. He knows, so you are praying from the position, my father knows what I am in need of. So I am not about to beg him to do what I'm about to ask. He knows it before I came. And he said, my God shall supply my needs according to his riches in glory, so he will do it for me. I announce to someone here today something that is a concern in your heart now before the next 24 hours it shall become your testimony if you are saying amen shout the Lord and say amen something that was a concern before you came here tonight before the next 24 hours it shall become your testimony hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. That is what faith is all about. You ask him to confirm dependence on him. You ask him to confirm your helplessness without him. You ask him to give him the pleasure of being requested from. That pleasure. What does faith involve? Number five, faith involves praying from the position of spiritual responsibility praying from the position of spiritual responsibility 
one of your strongest dimensions of faith is when you have done what God wants you to do and you are coming to ask him what he says he will do if you have done your part. For example, John chapter 15 verse 16. He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever he shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you so you went out and brought forth fruit that remain then you came to him and said father you said if i bring forth fruit that remain anything i ask of you you will do i am not asking for too much i am asking for fresh fire am i communicating then you said, "Ye shall serve the Lord your God." Exodus twenty three twenty five, and He shall bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Lord, I am serving you the best I know how. In soul winning, in kingdom service, in financial service, you say you will take sickness away from the middle of me. Take this hypertension away. Am I communicating? When you have discharged spiritual responsibility, you are connected to spiritual possibilities. You don't beg for possibilities if you are not lacking in responsibility. That is why it, like, it appears like some people are faster than others in, on, in, on this spiritual journey. No, 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 no. They studied the scripture to know their role. So they played their role. And God is playing his role. I have not asked God for money for maybe 30 years. Lord, I need money. <laughs> She's great. <laughs> that is, I need money. You can ask my wife. We have been married for 28 years. Wherever we join a hand together and say, Father, we need money. It's not a prayer point. I do what brings the money. I do with God. What he expects me to do, I discharge my responsibility. And he ushers me into possibilities. Very, very simple. You are seated in a church where you are not under any trace of pressure financially. There are places where you'll be afraid of coming to church on Sunday because you don't know the next offering. If you don't bring, don't come. You are fully relaxed and at home. Whether you gave offering, nobody is aware. We, if you didn't give, nobody is aware. Even that many times the pastor forgot to take offering. Then the church members will be reminding him. I'm sure you are aware of that. It's a new day for you. I announce to you today, anything you need to do for that prayer point of yours to be answered, God will reveal it to you. I think that is one of the best prayers somebody can pray right now. Anything you need to do for that particular prayer point to be answered. What is uppermost in your heart? Whether it is spiritual fire, financial breakthrough, marital breakthrough, the breakthrough of fruit of the womb, whatever it is. That particular thing you need to do for God to answer that particular prayer. In this season, it, should, it shall be revealed to you. I said, it shall be revealed to you. If you are saying amen, say a louder amen. If you are saying amen, shout the loud most amen. <laughs> Give the Lord a praise and take your seat. Is somebody getting anything here tonight? It involves praying from the position of spiritual responsibility. Finally, for tonight, 
Faith involves praising I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm praising. It involves praising and praying. Praying and praising. What is the meaning of that? You praised before the prayer. You praised in the course of the prayer. You praised while waiting for the result. You praised when the result came. Did you see, see, see how it is? Why do you praise? You praised before the prayer. Before you made the request, you gave thanks. In the course of making the request, you are thanking. After you have finished praying, you are, giving, you are thanking in an expectation of what is coming. When it has come, you are praising. Isn't it very sweet? Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and verse 7. He said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I don't know if it was the Message Bible or the Living Bible that says, that don't worry about anything but let thanksgiving shape your desires into prayer find that translation for me maybe the message bible or the amplified version of philippians chapter 4 and in verse 6 will you do that very sharp i'm sure the, the ict are having little issue with their system very, very important. In John chapter 6 and in verse 11, before Jesus multiplied the five loaves and two fishes, he gave thanks. He gave thanks. John chapter 11, verse 41, at the tomb of Lazarus, he gave thanks. Father, I thank thee. Father, I thank thee. Why are you thanking God? Psalm 106 verse 12 you believe his word then you sang his praise then believe they his word and they sang I am not about to struggle with God all the things I will ever need God has provided so father I thank you for the crusade in Cameroon I thank you for the drastic things you are going to do the witches that will suffer. <laughs> and the wizards that will return back to hell. And the powers of darkness that will be buried. Father, I thank you. And I give you the praise. Be glorified, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And so now, I make demands on fresh fire, fresh power for that crusade. And then I prayed, thank you, Lord, because you have heard. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered. Thank you, Lord. You, you started with worship. You stepped into, uh, into supplication, branched back into worship, and the things are happening, and you are worshiping. Do you remember the night of the crutches? Can you show us that night of the crutches, the first night? Sorry, I'm asking you to show things when your system is not functioning well. That night, massive celebration that followed God's answer. Many people pray as if they are quarreling. Lord, why? Eh? Why? Am I the only one? <laughs> See, the night of the crutches in Cameroon. And we started dancing and jubilating and rejoicing. That was last week, Thursday. Zambia shall see that this year. Amen. Shortly. 
Hallelujah. Lord, why? You, why did you forget me? <laughs> I have tried, though. You know I have tried. All this while I have been believing you. <laughs> no. Let's start with Thanksgiving. We worship you, we honor you. El Shaddai, Adonai. And I give you all the glory. I praise and honor you. I praise and give you glory. I praise and honor you. After a while, the climate of your prayer is charged. So charged. That when you release one word of prayer, it passes through principality limitations. It passes through dark clouds of witchcraft limitation and goes where the answers are needed. And something changes in your life. I announce to someone here, tonight is that night you've been waiting for. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. <laughs> if you are saying amen, shout the loud, must say amen. Lift your right hand and say, tonight is my night. <laughs> say it louder. Say, tonight is my night. Stand on your feet with the loudest shout of praise. Say, tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. Remain standing on your feet. Take the time to understand and know the God you serve. Just know him first. He's the foundation for faith. That's right. Take the time to go through scripture and know who God is and what he did before. Don't rush into prayer. Most times you should assemble from scripture what you believe is God's word concerning what you are asking. What is his will on this matter? Assemble it. I heard from God's servant bishop. He said he writes down his prayer. The basis of it first. He will just write it down before he starts the prayer. Like calculation. Pray with conviction. If you are not sure it will be answered, don't pray. When you pray, believe. That was number four. And then, accept spiritual responsibility. Is there anything, Lord, you are expecting me to do to make this prayer to be answered? Show me. And then, be profuse in praise. Be profuse in appreciation. And God shall give us result. I want us to press six prayer points within the next few minutes. Will you be able to do that? Lift up your hands first of all and let's thank the Lord for his word to us tonight.